today on Family Talk. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Family Talk. I'm Roger Marsh, along with your host, distinguished child psychologist and best-selling author, Dr. James Dobson. On today's program, you're going to hear the conclusion of Dr. Dobson's brand new conversation with pro-life activist Janet Porter. Janet is the founder and president of Faith to Action. That's Faith, the number two, Action. This organization has helped spread the word about the science and mercy of the Heartbeat Bill. Before starting Faith to Action, Janet worked with the Ohio Right to Life and the Center for Reclaiming America as well. She has written five books and appeared on numerous national television and radio programs all across the country. On yesterday's broadcast, Janet Porter and Dr. Dobson celebrated the passage of the Ohio Heartbeat Bill. This profound pro-life piece of legislation protects pre-born children as soon as a heartbeat is detected. In just a moment, Janet will talk more in depth about the journey to get that bill passed. She will also assert that these state-sponsored bills are critical stepping stones to reversing Roe v. Wade. Well, there's a lot of content to cover here, so let's get to it now. Here is part two of Dr. Dobson's interview with Janet Porter. You are listening to Family Talk, a ministry of the James Dobson Family Institute. Janet, thank you so much for coming to be with us again. Thank you so much, Doc. You were on the broadcast last time. You moved me to tears. I'm not kidding. You were so excited, and that excites everybody else. That's contagious. And you, what you have been thrilled about is the passage of the heartbeat bill in the state of Ohio and six other states, and there's more to come. For those who didn't hear the program last time, tell everybody again what the heartbeat bill is really all about. Sure, I can summarize it in a sentence. It says, if a heartbeat is detected, the baby is protected. That's the heartbeat bill. So that if you can hear that baby's heartbeat, then that child will be legally protected. And it's basically paying attention to the yardstick science has given us uh, when it comes to the very young. And so, and it's, at how many weeks is the we can heartbeat? we can hear that heartbeat uh, between six, seven, eight weeks, uh, uh, depending on our technology. So in Ohio, it is illegal now to kill a baby, abort a baby after six or seven weeks. Well, so it could be as young as six weeks, um, but the bill has not yet gone into effect, and we certainly expect that the the pro aborts are going to uh, uh, sue and and hold it up in court. Um, But this bill, make no mistake, this bill was crafted to be the arrow in the heart of Roe versus Wade. We want it to go up to the Supreme Court, and that's been its plan from its conception. So it's not going to discourage you if it goes to court. No, it's been we've we have planned on it. We're counting on it, and we're excited about the prospect of bringing Roe versus Wade crumbling to the ground. Oh, finally, man, finally, what a finally. day that's going to be. <laughs> yes, it is, and it's coming, Doc. It's coming. The wind is no longer in our face; it is at our back, and and there has been a shift. People understand; they get it. It's common sense that, and that's why seven out of ten in America, according to the Barna poll, favor the heartbeat bill becoming law. Americans. Across the board, in every demographic, Doc, if you are looking at uh, at Republicans, 86% of them. Imagine if you're facing a primary. That's nice to know. 86% favor the heartbeat bill. Uh, if you look at uh, Democrats, you'd expect, well, you know, we probably wouldn't have a majority of them. Wrong. 55% of Democrats uh, said, here's the question, if a doctor is able to detect the heartbeat of an unborn baby, that baby should be legally protected. 55% of Democrats, 61% of independents, 7 out of 10 Americans across the board in a very renowned, prestigious this scientific This is poll. a winning issue. I wish every, uh, especially every Republican, but every candidate uh, for any office knew those numbers because this is a winning issue. It is. Because people get it. To deny a heartbeat is to deny science. It brings tears to my eyes to think about you're fighting out there pretty much alone in the beginning. I think of Wilberforce fighting against slavery, and it took him, I don't know how many years. It's been a time when I could have told you the number of years, but he never gave up, even when he was overwhelmed by opposition. And uh, there in England, he fought especially the slave trade, uh, but then it led uh, to uh, people around the world being recognized how evil slavery was. Uh, I think we're at that same point if we don't give up, if we don't stop. There has been a shift. 
doctor. I mean, people would come up to me and say, you're the Wilberforce. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to hear that. He, you know, he had a slavery on his deathbed. I'm like, I just want it then now. I want it then right now. Um, but mm-hmm. but I do know this, that there has been a shift. And, and I, I'm excited about it. And I'm just saying that no matter where you live, even if you live in a, a very, very deep blue state, doesn't matter. Introduce a heartbeat bill. Start saving lives just from the education, the publicity of this you baby's know, beating heart. With our enthusiasm, we can't underestimate the the power and the money and the other resources that the far left has. And we could lose uh, many of the things we stand for in 2020. Uh, I'm not talking politically here now. I'm talking about the things that are right and righteous, the things that represent the eternal values and have the heart of the Lord. I'm convinced of that. He sees what we're doing. We need to be in prayer, and we should not give up on prayer. Because do you not believe that ultimately that's why you have been able to do what you've done in Ohio? There's no question about it. We had so many prayer meetings at the State House. I mean, I literally lost count of the rallies we've had, the prayer meetings we've had. Prayer is what has sustained this, but it's got to be more than prayer. Once you pray, you get off your knees, you get on your feet. But it goes two ways. It can be all action and not having right. prayer to go with it. It's, it's, gotta it's be a both. combination. When we started, they said this was impossible. But the state of Ohio motto, as I mentioned, is with God, all things are possible. And I'm like, either that's true or it's not true. And I'm banking everything I have that, that it's true because Jesus was the one that said it, right? So if you want to do the impossible, if you want to see the impossible bow the knee to Jesus, then you need to step out and attempt to do what they say can't be done. And whether it's a heartbeat bill, whether it's protecting the institution of marriage. By the way, Obergefell no, no longer, it, it didn't settle the issue of marriage any more than Roe versus Wade settled the issue of abortion. We need to be fighting on all of these fronts um, and communicating the truth and love in all of these arenas. And I, I just want to say again, Doctor, you've been you've just been such a, a a a leader in this. You have stood firm on truth, and I know it's been lonely, and I know there's been times when when you have to stand alone, um, and it's it's very hard, but it's very worth it because now the shift is taking place, and I'm telling you that everything that God has put on your heart to do, whether it's a, a film company and and to broadcast, and, uh, take it to the world. I'm just telling you, whatever it is He's told you to do, do it now. The best part of my week, once we passed this bill, when it became law, my dream of a decade, I was reading in Jeremiah. It's not that impressive because I was halfway through my last year's one-year Bible. But I was reading in Jeremiah 50, and it says, do everything I have commanded you to do. (laughs) That's what it's all about. I was able to put a check mark at that verse. And that's... That's really what it's all about. Oh, man. You have been faithful. <laughs> You've been faithful no matter what pressure was put on you, Janet. I am so proud of you. I told you that in the beginning last time. And I'm very, very proud of you uh, because there are very few who have really stayed in the fight for this length of time. You've been at it a long time. I mean, you, you and I have been working together for a long time. You were on my program back when I was on the Focus on the Family. Yeah. And, uh, and I just uh, want people to know more about you. Uh, you founded Faith to Action. Yes. Tell everybody what that is. Sure. It's uh, turning people of faith into people of action. That's it. If you have faith, uh, then let's let's put it to action. Let's let's advance the kingdom of God in every arena, in whatever issue that God's put on your heart. Um, the last 10 years, we've been focused on the heartbeat bill, but there's all kinds of things we can do. We stood, of course, for marriage and, and the issues that matter to God. Yeah. I think right now, the time is is right for you to go to heartbeatbill.com or f2a.org and click, get that model bill. Take it to your state rep. By the way, they work for you. Faith to Action is the name of it. That's right. Faith, the number two, action.org. Or heartbeatbill.com will also get you the model bill. You can take it to your state rep. Take it to your state senator. Let's let's get hearts beating. Let's quit talking about abortion. Let's start ending abortion. Janet, when you were trying to get this through the Ohio legislature, you had to have been opposed by people who just radically did not like what you were suggesting, and yet some of them came across. How in the world did you convince them that this was in their interest to do? Give some advice to those who are fighting this in other states. Sure. I, what I want to say to people is do not give up influence for access. 
You know, I used to be in the establishment. You know, I had worked to pass bills like parental consent and woman's right to know and the fetal homicide bill. We, we worked to pass the nation's first ban on partial birth abortion. I used to have John Kasich's cell phone number. I was in all the photo ops. But when you want to do more than regulate abortion, that's when you run into resistance from those who are uh, a Republican in name only, that don't adhere to the pro-life plank of the platform. Yeah. And so uh, what happened was we had passed the bill not once, not twice, but three times. And I'll just take you through this last week. What happened was um, the Senate had, had weakened the bill. They gutted the bill in the Senate passed version. The House had it. Our intent was to fix it in the House, to protect babies not just past 12 weeks, but from when they can first hear that baby's heartbeat, which is closer to six weeks, which saves closer to 15,000 uh, to 17,000 babies as opposed to just a handful of babies. And so the week of that uh, that vote, the Senate uh, had passed the weaker version. The House, they said they were going to correct it, but they didn't keep their word. And so I was ready to declare war, Doc. I was on the phone with, with Mark Harrington of Created Equal. I said, all right, this is where we're having our press conference. We're going to scream bloody murder. We're going to tell the world what's happening. And around 8.30, that call was interrupted with a call from the leadership in the Ohio House. And they said to me, this is what it went. The call said, basically, what do you want? And I said, <laughs> I, I want that language out of the bill so that we can protect every child. And they gave it to me. And so then we heard that when we pass it through the House with the strongest version to protect 20,000 babies instead of just 3,000 babies, well, then the Senate was going to try to take it to conference committee to gut it again, like they had tried to initially. And so I put out an email to Senate President Larry Oboff, and I said, I said, is the Senate planning to gut the heartbeat bill again? And call Senate President Larry Oboff, and I know this for certain, that people picked up the phone and they rang his phone right, there's off the, the key. Hook. That's you it. You had the support of the public. That's right. We, we have an activist army of people who will pick up the phone and dial it whenever we need it dialed. And basically they knew this, that if you got this bill, you're going to own it. The world's going to know, and you're, there's going to be consequences. Because these people have been facing our consequences for the last almost a decade, where we've run candidates against them, we've done mailings and ads and television, we've ran cartoons. In fact, one speaker said, uh, I have to pass this bill because I don't want Porter to make a cartoon about me. I mean, these are the <laughs> kinds of things. You just By exposing what they're doing, in fact, the New York Times article said that she she spoke disparagingly of some very good people. Well, these are good people who didn't do what, what they were elected to do. So we had to show the world that these nice sounding Republicans, all claiming to be pro-life, were blocking the most pro-life bill in America. And the good news is God gave us the victory. That's what just happened after nearly a decade of, of I mean, everything you can imagine. I mean, we, we rented an airplane to fly over the state house. I own a three-story heartbeat balloon that says, pass the heartbeat bill now. We put it in front of the state house. We had uh, teddy bears with beating hearts. We delivered 5,000 red heart balloons when we first launched this. 2,200 red roses on Valentine's Day for the Senate, uh, exposing that this is the amount of babies this bill would save in a month. Try to think of anything you can imagine. We rallies inside. Dr. Wilkie came. He actually left the organization he founded, Ohio what Right to Life. What a good man he was. What a great man. He, he he left uh, Ohio Right to Life, the organization he founded, to join our effort. He testified for the heartbeat bill in the House, the Senate. He spoke at our, our rally at the atrium where we had more, more people than they had chairs. We rented every chair they had. They said that we had more people at our heartbeat rally, on a, I think it was a Tuesday afternoon, than they've ever had in that room in the State House. We had an overflow outside with people watching. I mean, just telling you, people came out of the woodwork because we are tired. See, that's what it takes. It does. You know, I remember going back to the Clinton administration, Janet Reno, uh, who was attorney general, tried to weaken the laws against child pornography. I could not believe it. It took my breath away. We went on the air. and We closed down the Justice Department. We had many of the numbers. We closed it down. <laughs> and it's she, a great feeling, isn't she, it? It is because the people came uh, to support it. You know, you get that kind of support. It really resonates with people who want to stay in office more than they want anything else. That's right. The principles are secondary. Staying in office is what most of them or many of them want. That's what they and care about you most. you rattle their cage, man. They, they begin to get their minds straight, and apparently that's what happened in Ohio. <laughs> the phones rang, and I just say thanks to everyone who picked up the phone and called. These things, calls really do matter. Um, God is famous for working through remnants. And that's what I'm telling you. If we can do it in Ohio, which is a purple state, then you can do it in your red state, even in your blue state, just to get the information out. Did you come out of this unscathed? Are you okay? Okay. In, in what if way? Physical health. Uh, 
the emotional health. I mean, this has drained you a lot, I know. I'm actually uh, still recovering from, I mean, we fought every inch, even in this last, up until the moment of the vote, we were fighting to make sure that this was going to be a strong vote, you know, that this was going to be exactly what it needed to be. And the good news is it is. So I'm going to recover. I'm going to um, maybe get reacquainted with my husband. Um, and, and I realized nine of our 10 year marriage, we've been fighting this battle. Um, so we're going to help other states, but I'm actually going to be pro-marriage, Doc. I think you'd appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna go somewhere. I don't know where. When he's getting through uh, tax there season, there are plenty of battles to be fought. I know it. I know it. And I'll be in them. Uh, in fact, I'll be in Michigan next week, uh, working to help them get their heartbeat bills going. And and other nations are already calling. The phone's ringing off the hook to say, how can we do what you did in New Zealand? We want to do it in Singapore. We want to do it in Panama. And uh, we say yes, we'll help you. And you can go to heartbeatbill.com, get the model bill, get the fact sheets, get the information you need to get started. Janet, in our program last time, you gave me a little coin with some writing on it and a beautiful baby's picture on the back. And it reads, if a heartbeat is detected, the baby is protected. That's the theme for this heartbeat bill, isn't it? And the effort to uh, pass it. And the other side of it says, heartbeat bill hero. You gave that to me. You I will cherish that, but you're the hero. Well, all the glory you're goes the to God. Hero. I told him when we set this battle out that, he, that when he does this, he's going to get all the credit and all the glory. I have something else for you. This is very precious because I this may be our very last one. Um, this is a pin that the sponsors of the Heartbeat Bill, the 174 sponsors of the Heartbeat Bill in Congress, wear. There's only a few even state reps that have them. Um, it is a heart with the precious feet in the middle. We had them custom made for this bill. There were members of leadership that came up to Congressman King and said, hey, I really admire your pin. Can I get one? He said, yes, as soon as you co-sponsor the bill, I'd be happy to pin it on Can you myself. Can people get one with a small donation? We have none left, um, but we may be ordering some more later, but I want to give you so this. So I got the last one. You got one. the last one. I just took it off my lapel. I want to <laughs> give it to you. May I pin it on you? <laughs> oh, my. Please do. It's probably not something you want to do on the radio, but... Uh, uh, this is something I want to do. I'm proud of it. I want you to have it. It feels good, doesn't it? It sure does. It sure does. And you know, the other states, where we are right now is a different place than where we were uh, nearly a decade ago, where no one ever heard of it. And they, you know, thought it was ridiculous and where they're used to regulating abortion. They, they weren't really used to actually something that would, would end nearly every abortion. But now... You're starting, wherever you start right now, you've already got the wind at your back with, with seven states, soon to be eight, soon to be nine, soon to be 10, that have passed heartbeat bills into law, and it's easier than it was when we began. Let me, we're let me ask you one last question. Uh, what about the issue of rape and incest? Is that uh, prohibited in this bill? Uh, there are no exceptions in our bill and most of the heartbeat bills around the country. Uh, I'll tell you one story uh, about that. Um, there's a little girl named Bella. She was five years old, and she'd bring her, her little baby doll with her to most of the hearings. Um, and this one particular day, uh, when they were voting on whether or not to put a rape incest exception in this bill, she had big hearts, and she cut them out of construction paper. This little five-year-old girl, she wrote, thank you. And so here's this little adorable girl who was, through no fault of her own, conceived through rape. And they, she passed out the hearts to the reps on the committee. And here they were, voting about whether or not they should kill little babies like her. And they're literally holding her heart in their hands, and they voted that down. And so we saw it with uh, Rebecca Kiesling came in, and she made a very compelling uh, uh, testimony as a product of, of rape. She said, no, I'm not the, the rapist uh, child. I'm the rape victim's child. And she said, you know what? We kill rapists, not babies. And that's really the issue. You don't kill innocent children for the crime of their fathers. And uh, with the heartbeat bill, um, you can have an abortion uh, if you're the pr victim of rape, incest, or any other reason, as long as it's prior to that detectable heartbeat. So, uh, so the same provisions apply. The same provisions apply. And if that heartbeat can be heard, that baby is protected. And, and that's uh, across the board. And there were amendments that tried to say we should kill handicapped children or kill children who are of the wrong Downs, race. I mean, just, Down yeah. syndrome. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's appalling yeah. to see how, how absolutely bigoted and biased these people are. That, you know, you'll give them a parking spot real close as a handicapped spot, but you want to screen them out before they're ever born? Really? And we had a, uh, a mother 
mother come and testify with her little disabled daughter, talking about that she's the happiest person in this room because her little girl who was told that, that she wasn't going to live was still alive, even though she was severely handicapped, and that she was just very loving. She'd reach out and touch your face. And if you could have listened to the, to the questions, mm-hmm. Doc, saying, well, what about your other children? And what about the resources that she, she said, I do everything I can for every child, and this child is no different. How dare you say that a handicapped child isn't worth as worthy as a child who, who doesn't have special needs? Or the amendment that came out of one of the members, uh, Representative Boyd, suggested that we make an exemption for African-American women. Really? Is what you're saying that we should kill little black babies because they're not the right race, they're not protected because they're not Asian or, or Hispanic or white, that, that we should say these babies should be killed? That's what their amendment was. And I, I've just never seen it. I've never seen it in all my, in all my 40 years of this battle. Such mm. extremism, such wickedness. Um, and yet, I mean, I'll just tell you, they come out to the state house. One, one woman comes with her favorite T-shirt that says, Pro-Abort Witch. She big with with the big pentagram earrings, and they come and they they focus their cell phone on you, and they you know talk about you and and you know ridicule you, and and, and they they don't even make any qualms about it, which is why we point again to the fact that the heart of this battle, it's a spiritual issue, and oh, that's why is. the intercession is. is so critical, and many other the issues of the day, mm-hmm. it really comes down to spiritual matters. It does. You know, the reason we have armor, Doc, is because we're in a war. Most people don't think, they don't know that. They think if they just stay quiet, then they'll stay clear of it. No, no, no. You're in a war. You're in a battlefield. That's what that armor of God is for. Only one side seems to know it, though. That's right, right. We're not even showing up on the field. I remember somebody saying, you know, that we're in the Super Bowl, and our, our team isn't even on the field. You know, they're at the mall somewhere. If we actually just showed up... We can win these battles, and that's the key. We, we, we have so many times they say, well, President Trump won. I can go back to my life now. I can win the battle and then quit and go home. No, no, no. You win the battle so that we get a chance to advance the ground. We're, I'm so tired of reacting, responding, and defending a shrinking piece of real estate. This is our chance to advance the kingdom of God in every arena. We are supposed to occupy until he comes, and that's what it's all about. Let's go for it. Amen. Amen. So for, We're going to end I abortion. I support you 100%, Janet. I hope that the people of Ohio will continue and elsewhere will continue to support the work that you do. Thank you. Uh, there are very few like you, and uh, I am proud of you. And it's been a pleasure having you here today. You got on a plane, flew here, and now you have to fly home. I know you didn't have time to do this. It was at the last minute. I asked you to do it, and you're here and uh, that doesn't surprise me because you have been there year after year. You haven't gotten discouraged, and you have been winning battles. I'd like to see you win a few more. Thank you, Doctor. It's my privilege. And you asked earlier, I don't think I answered the question sufficiently uh, about, you know, am I unscathed? There's some battle scars, to be sure, and there'll be, there'll be some recuperation that takes place. But there is nothing, there is nothing like being used by God to make a difference, to do what they say is impossible, to end abortion for every child whose heartbeat can be heard. There's what? nothing like it. And you know it, having been a history maker all these years, all your life. I, I just want to say thank you for not quitting. Now, if anybody could rest on their laurels, it would be you. Thank you for not quitting. Thank you for not giving up because there is much more to do and we have a chance to do it. That's as the good news. As long as I have breath within my body, I will fight. This is righteousness in action. Amen. Thank you for being here and I hope our listeners have caught the excitement of winning. It's an unusual situation to be in for us, but uh, we're going to win this. We're going to win this. We've got a pathway to victory, and the good news is God is uh, God is in it. He's doing it. And Roe versus Wade, it's coming down. It's going to crumble to the ground very soon because the arrow of the heartbeat bill is going to pierce the heart of Roe versus Wade. Have a good trip home. Thanks, Doc. I'm sure you all enjoyed that interview and the good news that she brings. And uh, it was just a pleasure having Janet with us today. Uh, Before I let you go, uh, there is a related message that I want to share with you. Uh, We did hear good news, but I, I also believe that America is facing its greatest challenge today, maybe since World War II because the American family is crumbling before our eyes. And the popular media refers to masculinity as being toxic now. Can you imagine that? 
the half the population is male and we're toxic. And children, of course, as young as five years of age are being taught LGBT ideology and gender neutral nonsense. It's just so much going on that concerns us. And um, James Dobson Family Institute is in the thick of the struggle. I can't even describe to you the ways that we're involved in this effort to defend the institution of the family and the Judeo-Christian system of values. And uh, frankly, we do need your help because the task is enormous. Fortunately, we have a very generous donor who is deeply concerned about the direction America has taken. And uh, this man and his wife have given us a very significant matching grant to help fund the ministry and our efforts to make a difference in the culture. And the wonderful thing is that what that really means when you have a matching grant is that it doubles the value of a gift. So uh, if you are able and would like to come alongside us in this struggle, we would certainly appreciate your partnership. And we would appreciate your prayers too because that's the source of all meaning for all of us. So I hope you'll come by and see us when you can, and God be with you. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.